Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Spectrum Classes. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about the rotating frame of reference, which is a very important concept to know for NMR spectroscopy. But before discuss about the rotating frame of reference, let's have a recap of the previous video. In the last video, we have discussed that an NMR sample is having a collection of spins which are having their magnetic moment. When this system is placed in the ex applied external magnetic field, these nuclei spin about the G axis that is the axis of the applied external magnetic field. And in this way, there are a number of precisional motions about this G axis. Just to simplify this picture, net magnetization vector was introduced. So here this yellow arrow shows the net magnetization vector which is represented by mg. This is nothing but sum of the magnetic moment of all the nuclei which are present in the sample. Now onwards we will represent this picture in this manner. Here this is the net magnetization of the collection of spins which is placed in the applied external magnetic field. This magnetization vector presses about this G axis. When an external oscillating magnetic field is applied in the perpendicular direction of the B naught field that is either in the direction of X axis or in the direction of Y axis, this net magnetic vector is starts processing about this B1 field also. So the simultaneous precession about the two axes that is about B0 axis and about the axis makes the system very complicated to visualize the moment of the magnetization. Now here you may have a question why this ring shown over here this we will discuss in the next slide since this magnetization vector is processing about this b naught field as well as in the applied radio frequency field and the precisional motion in the laboratory frame is very difficult to visualize just to simplify this complicated picture a virtual frame of reference which is called as a rotating frame is introduced or in other words one can understand that if a, our sample is placed on a rotating frame of reference here the rotating frame of reference is represented by these dotted lines and their conventions are represented by x prime and y prime I would like to suggest that do, do not confuse this is the actual representation of the laboratory and this is the rotating frame of reference which is a virtual frame. So if we place our sample on this virtual frame of reference and if this rotating frame of reference is moving with the same frequency or with the lama frequency of this magnetization vector and in the same direction and somehow the observer is sitting on this like the situation you can visualize like a merry-go-round. So here this observer is on this virtual rotating frame of reference. We can uh, relate this as the motion of the earth. So the observer is on the rotating frame of reference and the precisional motion of this magnetization vector seems to be static with respect to this observer. This can be related with the same analogy like we have shown here. Here these are the cars which are moving in the same direction with same speed then both the drivers are seems to be static with respect to each other. In this manner the magnetization vector seems to be static with respect to rotating frame of reference. In other words, the static field disappears like this. This seems to be static and in this way, if omega, which is the precisional frequency, is equal to 0, then omega is proportional to B0. So, B0 in this rotating frame of reference 
disappears or frozen away. And this magnetization vector is static with respect to the observer on this rotating or this virtual frame of reference. Please note, in actual situation, this magnetization vector feels both B0 as well as B1. Now, here we are going to discuss about the B1 field. Since the external magnetic field is denoted by B0, so simply it is denoted by B1. This is the oscillating secondary magnetic field. This is represented over here. Here we are going to discuss about the cyclic representation of a wave. Since radio frequency radiation is an electromagnetic radiation, so it has two components. One is electric component and the other one is magnetic component. So here we are just not considering the electric vector of this radio frequency. However, uh, suppose this is the magnetic vector, then the electric vector is perpendicular to the plane of this paper. If this is the direction of the propagation of a wave. And this is simply represented over here as a sine wave. And the amplitude of this wave is represented by B1, which is also known as the strength of the field. This sine wave form can also be represented in the cyclic form. Suppose in the cyclic form, which is having radii equal to B1. Suppose our particle is moving and is now at the point P, then it makes an angle theta with this, which is equal to the omega t. We are not going into the details. In the cyclic uh, form, this omega t is the phase difference with respect to t. So, therefore, this oscillating radio frequency radiation is represented in the form of cycle and this red arrow represents that this radio frequency is applied in the x direction which is perpendicular to the applied external magnetic field. If we assume that there is a rotating frame of reference which is processing with the lama frequency and this is our radio frequency radiation if both are moving with the same speed and in the same direction, then for the observer, this oscillating radio frequency radiation seems to be static. Here, we can relate the same analogy here also. This B1 field seems to be static in this rotating frame of reference. It can be applied in either of the direction, like as we discussed earlier, it can apply either in the x direction or y direction. The combined effect in this rotating frame of reference for the B node as well as for the B1 is represented over here. This magnetic vector seems to be static means B node field is no more there on this rotating frame of reference. Secondly, this oscillating radio frequency radiation seems to be static with respect to this rotating frame of reference. So the situation is now very much simplified. Now this magnetization vector no more feeling the B0 field and only experience this radio frequency re radiation. Therefore a force is applied which tilt this magnetization vector towards this B1 field and in this way this magnetization vector starts processing in the yg direction about this b1 field. The picture can be represented over here. This is our b1 field which seems to be static and applied in the x direction which is the perpendicular direction of b node. Here is the magnetization vector and this magnetization vector starts processing about this b1 field in the yg direction. This can be represented with this animation, this in this way. If we somehow know with how much speed this magnetization vector is tilted towards the y direction, at the same moment we can stop the radio frequency radiation. If we stop the radio frequency radiation at this position, then that is called as a 90 degree pulse. And if we stop this net magnetization vector at this moment, then this is called 180 degree pulse. Now the summary of the lecture is that 
In the rotating frame of reference, net magnetization vector seems to be stationary as it doesn't experience B0 field. Secondly, the oscillating magnetic field that is B1 is also seems to be static with respect to the virtual frame or rotating frame of reference. And on this rotating frame of reference, this net magnetization vector experience only the oscillating magnetic field that is the radio frequency radiations or B1 field and therefore it starts processing in the yz plane so these are the consequences of using rotating frame of reference in the nmr spectroscopy in the next video we are going to discuss about the pulse and how that is going to be interact with this magnetization vector in the rotating frame of reference i hope you understand this concept of rotating frame of reference and if you like this video please subscribe my channel that motivates me a lot thank you all